Okay, so Garmin has just dropped an absolutely massive feature update for the Garmin Phoenix 8, the Enduro 3, as well as even the Phoenix E. Who knew that they would actually get some love at some point in time? Now, this feature list is basically three different categories of features all being rolled together. The first one is features that are totally brand new to Garmin altogether and not seen on any previous watches. The second category is virtually all of the Garmin 400 570 and 970 features. It came out almost a month ago today, a little more than a month ago. And then the third set of features is new features that were announced on the Garmin Venue X1 about a week or two ago. So in together, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's 28, yes, 28 new features uh, that are combined in this whole package here. So I'm gonna walk through the most interesting ones to me and then uh, we'll go from there. Now, the first thing to know about this is this is the public beta program. So you do need to enroll your device in Garmin Connect to get this, and then you simply connect to Wi-Fi and download the update package. Really straightforward, just like all their past public beta updates. Uh, generally speaking, we'll probably see these uh, hit production sometime in the August timeframe is usually the way it works, like mid-August, give or take. Also know that for the first portion of the public beta, the diving and ECG apps are disabled. So you cannot use either of those two on the public beta. So if you have a dive trip coming up, definitely don't download the public beta. Same goes if you need ECG features. Now the entire install takes about five to six minutes. It's super quick and easy. The very first on the list here is the addition of the calculator app. Uh, so this is something I think a lot of people have been asking for for a while. Uh, the way it works is you press the upper right hand button and then go all the way down the apps list to calculator. Now you'll see the calculator there, but you'll also see a tip button. And that tip button is is the option to go ahead and calculate a tip. Uh, so you can see the percentage to increase or decrease there. You can even add the number of people there. And at the very bottom, it'll do the math for you to figure out with the tip how it's divided into the number of people. Well done, this is pretty creative. And hey, just a quick note before we go too far, if you're finding this video interesting and useful, just simply watch it all the way through. That is the only thing YouTube gods care about and we need to keep the YouTube gods happy around here, okay? Next up is the addition of custom focus modes. Now, when the Phoenix 8 launched a year ago, Garmin talked a lot about focus modes, uh, but at the time they only had two, basically activity and sleep. And they said eventually you'd have custom modes just like you can do on your phone. Well, now is eventually. Uh, so now you can create your own custom modes. Uh, within that, you can define the settings for them, the name for them, etc. They've added the evening report. This is something we saw introduced on the 570 and 970. If you're familiar with the morning report, Exact same thing at nighttime, uh, you set the time it shows up. Uh, so in my case, I've set it for an hour and a half before bedtime, and it basically recaps the entire day for you. You can, of course, turn this off in the report settings if you want to, as well as customize what is there. And then with that, they've added more options in the morning report to customize the daily messages it gives to you if you want to have your own motivational messages or whatnot. Uh, likewise, I've also added Garmin Alerts Notification Center. This could be things like low battery alerts, etc., that will now show up in the Notification Center, similar to what you would see for text messages, etc. Next, they've added some language stuff. I will summarize this entire list at the end here uh, with some of the things that I've kind of skipped over. Uh, but getting into the sports bits here, they've added multi-sport workout support. Uh, so this is something they've added to the 570 and 970. It lets you create structured multi-sport workouts. So the idea to have swim, bike, run in a single cohesive workout, and then iterate through those steps automatically for all three of those sport types. You can now create those on Garmin Connect and push them to the watch. And then with that, they added the ability for Garmin Coach Triathlon Plans. This was also launched in the 570, 970, and the Venue X1. Uh, and it allows you to go ahead and get a Garmin Triathlon plan created. Uh, so you put a race out in the future there, and it creates your swim, bike, run workouts for you automatically, dynamically changes them if you skip them, or too high stress, or sleep, or whatever the case is. Uh, that is now supported on the Phoenix 8 as well. Next, they've added provisional finish point support, which, by the way, is a different name they call it on the 570, 970. Probably realized in the 570, 970 name of, like, projected finish finish something or other was incredibly confusing. What this means is if you load a course into a race and then you go do that race and then you finish the race, uh, if you were to just not stop at the end of the race, like, you know, you cross the line and just go off and get distracted by orange slices or whatever the case is, and an hour later you look at your watch and realize you never put stop, uh, this will actually automatically backdate to the point that you cross the finish line using the course file there. Now you can choose to accept or reject that if you want to, uh, but it is an option there and it's super handy uh, just to save you a bunch of time in doing that in Garmin Connect later on. Next, they've added running tolerance and impact load factor, also from the 570 and 970. Impact load factor essentially looks at uh, when you go out for a run, and let's say you went downhill a really steep section for a really long time. As a runner, you know that has a much bigger impact to your legs. Uh, the same goes for doing hard interval workouts. That's much harder on your legs than just doing, you know, a casual 5K run at an easy pace. What it does is give you essentially an adjusted mileage, very similar to grade adjusted pace, the same kind of concept for your distance. I found it's actually been pretty useful 
beautiful and pretty much spot on on the 570 and 970, and I would even argue one of my favorite features. Now, with that also comes the running tolerance. The idea behind this is it looks at your patch running history and builds up what is essentially a safe distance for you to run each week based on your past history, and then tells you when you're out of range that you've run simply too much. Now, I think this is pretty good overall, but in my experience in the 970, it doesn't seem to adjust fast enough to some of my bigger running weeks. Uh, now, the last uh, week or two, I've been gearing up for a Eurobike, so basically just doing pure cycling across the board with only a tiny bit of running. But prior to that, I was doing like 80 to 100K weeks, and uh, wasn't quite ramping up fast enough. Next, they've added running economy support. This does require the Garmin HRM 600 heart rate strap uh, because it depends on the running step speed loss metric. What the running step speed loss metric is looking at is essentially the losses that you have every time your foot hits the ground and how efficient that is. That metric there requires HRM 600, and then from there, that feeds into run economy. I have found neither of these metrics super helpful in the grand scheme of things because they tend to really force you to run slow and not slow for aerobics sake, but slow just to please the metric, which doesn't seem to be the right thing to do here. And neither of these metrics handle things like trail runs well or interval runs well or anything like that. They pretty much ignore all that data and just want you to run slow all the time. Next, they've added projected finish time. Uh, this is in your race events. If you put a race on the calendar, a running race, for example, uh, and let's say you put a, in this case, a marathon in October, what you'll see on that page there is a finish time if you do the race today, in this case, 134.35, and the projected finish time if you're doing October October based on your current training. Now, again, my experience with this is it takes a little bit longer for these numbers to kind of take effect here. They're getting closer to, I think, what my race time would be right now, but I'm guessing I'd be like in the 126 to 129 ish range, give or take, somewhere in that range there. Uh, so it's still estimating me a little bit higher than that. Uh, but I think eventually, after a few more weeks getting back on running as opposed to cycling, it'll probably snap back into things. Now, the last running related thing they've added here is the ability to add track run as an option for daily suggested workouts. So, up until now, daily suggested workouts for run have been basically to run a given set distance or time and assume that outdoors uh, or really just assumes out on the road now you can have that snap to a track as well next looking at the venue x1 they bought in one of the features from that which is the smart wake alarm now technically speaking this actually started on the vivo active 6 about a month or two prior three months i don't know sometime this spring and the vivo active 6 was quietly launched there then moved to the venue x1 and now on the phoenix 8 i suspect at some point we'll probably also see it in the 400 570 970 but uh for now you now have on the Phoenix 8 Enduro 3, etc. Now, those are just the big ticket items, but there are a lot of other features. In fact, here is page one of the entire list of new features that are added to this list right there. And then here is page two of the entire list of new features that are added to this list right there. It's as simple as that. Plus, that's in addition to all the performance and bug fixes they've added here as well. Now, keep in mind, this is beta, right? So if you've got a big Ironman race this weekend, don't don't load this. That's just asking for trouble. Just keep yourself on the thing that works uh, and enjoy your race. But for everyone else that's willing to be a little bit risky with their watch, here you go. Go ahead and load up the beta and see how well it works. In my experience with almost all these features on the 970, 570, and Venue X1, the things are pretty stable there. But of course, this has new features and it's an entirely different watch. So buyer beware, downloader beware, something like that. Anyways, if you found this video interesting and useful, go ahead and give it a like or subscribe. Plenty more sports tech coming up this week. It is Eurobike week, as I mentioned, starting here in 12 hours, 11 hours, 10 hours. Have a good one.